there really isn't that many parts. There's only like six different parts to put this all together. Each uh, RV guest will have their own dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot. Hi, this is Hef the IT Guy coming to you from Harmony Ridge RV Park. Tom and Troy, the RV park builder, asked me to handle today's video to do some show and tell with the internet. And we're going to be doing a review of some products that we're using. So this is a, um, a Wi-Fi router that we are installing at <clears throat> each RV site. So each uh, RV guest will have their own dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot at the pedestal. So we're going to be going through, um, you know, some parts to make this all work. And I know in the last video I had said that, you know, this isn't really a do-it-yourselfer project, and it really isn't. But I do know that there's some, you know, technical people out there that can probably handle this. And there really isn't that many parts. There's only like six different parts to put this all together on what we're doing here at uh, Harmony Ridge RV Park. So I'm gonna be showing those those pieces and parts and um, you know, it kind of explain how they all fit together. And then maybe we'll show some videos of uh, the installed system. Now this is this is episode three of our internet series. Episode one, we detailed uh, ML Connect, you know, hooking up the fiber optic at the road, bringing it down the road, bringing it into the property, and actually turning on the fiber internet here in this shed behind me, our utility shed. And then episode two was a lot of terms and strategies and um, challenges and how to address them, you know, in an RV park, you know, ended up being a lot longer video than I had anticipated. It was like an hour long and it was pretty technical and probably over your head or, you know, boring to a lot of you. So hopefully this video will be a little bit better. It's going to be show and tell and, uh, I don't think it's going to be an hour. So let's, let's get right, right to episode three here. All right, so today we're gonna to talk a lot about power. You know, one of the challenges of, you know, running a network, running a lot of network equipment is, you know, having power available where all your devices do, or where all your devices have to go. And everyone, you know, is familiar with this type of device here. This is your, you know, wall transformer. You plug it into, you know, 110 volts and then it gives you DC out that you would, you know, you would plug into, you know, devices throughout your house. So, the, you know, this is, um, you know, pretty much the most common way to power internet devices, but we're not going to use this at all in our implementation. So, what we're doing is we're using what's called PoE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet. So, the way it works is we have what's called a, a PoE injector. So that's this guy right here. It's got, you know, the wall plug on one end. You plug into the wall and you get power here. So this is, this is very similar to this type of setup. You know, it's got a transformer in it that converts AC to DC. But instead of having, you know, a power cord on it, it has it has two Ethernet jacks on it. One is labeled PoE and one is labeled LAN. So what this does is it goes in in line with your Ethernet connection and provides power to your device. So for example, here I have I have a, a 200 foot Ethernet cable. So I would plug one end of this into my power over Ethernet connector. 
so and then the other end would plug into my internet router okay back you know in my house or my barn or whatever on this short cable and then I would run this 200 footer out to wherever I needed my device and then I would plug that in to my router here like so and then the power injector gets plugged into the wall by where the router is and then this cable here carries both data and it also carries power from my power injector through this 200 feet of ethernet cable to power this device so I no longer have to have a separate transformer where this device goes in fact I don't have to have power there at all it gets power over the ethernet that's why it's called PoE power over ethernet so it gets power through this injector and these actually come with uh, you know injector for each one of these routers right so but that's not what we're gonna do so we're actually going to take it one step further so you know this is like what everybody knows this is a power over ethernet injector where you can plug it in but we're not going to use this injector we actually have a switch here that has uh, power providing capabilities in it so all we're going to do is plug our Ethernet cable into one of these jacks and this device will automatically get power from the switch. So we don't have to use the power injector or transformers at all. It makes a very clean install. I don't need to have power where this is. And the other, the other really big advantage of you know besides having a clean install and not having to have so you get a clean install that's one advantage um, you don't have to have power where this goes is advantage number two and then the big advantage of having a switch is I can remotely connect into the switch and I can I can turn off the power and turn the power back on effectively rebooting this guy how many times have you called technical support and they say unplug it for 10 seconds and then plug it back in you know so you got to put the phone down you got to walk in the other room you got to you know reach behind the tv or whatever and unplug it wait 10 seconds and plug it back in with this setup you don't have to do any of that you just go into the router turn the power off wait 10 seconds turn the power back on without ever having to leave your office chair so that's how we're hooking up Wi-Fi hotspots to each RV site. Now we've already run conduit from our utility shed to each RV site, so we just gotta we just gotta pull this cable through the conduit, put this on the RV pedestal, and plug the other end of the switch, and we're done. That's all that's to it. So that um, is two of our components: Ethernet cable, our Wi-Fi hotspots that go onto the the RV pedestal and then you know the switch we started talking about this a little bit now this switch has got 24 ports on it so I can hook up 24 of these to it I can also hook up a PoE camera into this as well in fact come on over here and I'll show you where I have one of those already hooked up so this is a, a PoE camera that's hooked into a switch that's already installed in this shed so just one cable goes inside and I'll show that to you in a minute here so so we have 24 ports of data and power these provide data and power both on the same cable um, and then what this switch has is it has four SPF ports which are these guys here can you zoom in on there? So these uh, SPF stands for small pluggable component, I think. 
So these are like um, configurable jacks where you can plug in various types of connections. Where these 24 here are for, you know, for this ethernet cable. That's all you can plug into here. But now here you have more flexibility. So you can unplug these and then here's what they look like. These are the SPC devices. So these are actually a uh, fiber uh, trans transmitters and receivers and they have a little circuit board in there. So these will just um, plug into here. You have to unlatch it first. Plug this into here. Latch it shut. And then there's a little rubber thing here that um, pulls out. So this is actually a, a multi-mode OM3 fiber connector. And this is how we're going to connect our two switches together. We're actually going to use two of these. We're going to have redundancy. So we're going to put in a second one of these in here as well. Just like so. And now we have, you know, two connections that can connect to fiber. Now behind here, we have, um, we have five, we have a, a roll of, this is a hundred, <coughs> hundred meter uh, fiber optic cable. And this will run through the conduit in the ground from this utility shed to the other utility shed. And these, um, this fiber optic cable will simply plug into here and then plug into another one of these switches at the other end. I actually have um, two of these. So there's one, one for this utility shed, one for the other utility shed. They'll be connected, um, these switches will be connected together with the fiber. So, and we're right at 330 feet, you know, 100 meters, which is right at the limit for copper so i technically could get a hundred a hundred meter piece of uh, copper um, patch cable cat six and run it on one of these standard jacks to the standard jacks at the other shed but i didn't want to really want to take a chance on that because it is right at the limit so i decided to go the fiber route instead and this is actually um armored fiber cable so the nice thing about um, the armored um, fiber optic cable is that you know it will be kind of rodent proof so mice and stuff can't um, you know we'll have a tough time chewing through it so the fiber connects the two switches together <coughs> the Wi-Fi hotspots connect into here through the conduit and that's really all that's to our our install and then of course our internet connection that um, you know comes from ML Connect will <coughs> plug into one of these jacks here, and that will make internet available, you know, to all these jacks and all the jacks in the other switch. Down below, I've, I've linked all these products so you can find them easily if you want to, you know, buy the same things or your shop for something similar. And there's also a link to our uh, HarmonyRidgeRV.com website. I have a page on there that has um, all of our product and our links and our build there and some additional information. So hop on over to www.HarmonyRidgeRV.com. Click on the RV Park Builder link and you'll find links to all this equipment in there as well if you want to purchase your own your own items for your own um, RV park or even you know you could use this in a farm type setting too you could have you know one of these in the house and one of these in the in your barn for example now 24 ports is is probably a little bit of an overkill for what I need here if I was only shopping for ports the reason why I like this particular switch is it's it provides more more PoE power than some of the other solutions I looked at. This is a 410 watt switch. 40 watts is used by the switch itself. And that, re that, that gives me a remaining 370 watts to power these guys and power cameras and that 
So these take about five to six watts a piece. You know, a camera, they'll take 16 to 20 watts each. And you, you know, these, each one of these ports can provide up to 30 watts of power. So number of ports is an overkill, extra power. And then also these SPF ports, I wanted four of them so I could run uh, redundant connections to the other building. And then from that other building down at the other end, I could, I could uh, daisy chain another connection from there. Now I'm using the, the multi-mode fiber here, which is for shorter distances <coughs> up to um, 550 meters. So if you do um, single mode fiber, which, you know, just requires different, you know, different transceivers here, you know, you can literally go 64 miles distance if you have to go further. But that would require a different cable and different connectors here. So let's, um, let's just take a peek inside the shed and you can see the other switch is already installed. <coughs> so just come on in here with me. Don't mind the mess. But up here is a is another one of the switches. It's already got um, three RV sites connected to it. So these are providing these three cables go down the conduit here in the back of the shed and go out to the RV sites and plug into a Wi-Fi router that's mounted on the pedestal. And this green one here is my uh, POE camera. So that's the camera that we saw on the outside. This is providing power to the camera out there. And then on top is the is the um, the fiber router that the fiber company provided. So the fiber comes into here, <coughs> goes into this router on the top, and then the router is connected to the switch to so this cable, this black cable here. So and then we will you know, connect our fiber from the switch out there on the truck, you know, to these ports up here. And then we'll have internet at uh, both locations. So that is uh, pretty much our install. You know, I need to tidy these up a little bit more and, you know, cinch them up with some uh, zip ties. But, you know, I wanted to get everything installed and working, you know, before I start securing stuff. One of the things too is the link, the links I have down below for the CAT5 cables. The, the one link I liked because I could um, order different combinations of length and color. So for example, I know my, my green cables are, are 14 footers and I, you know, I, I picked the color. So I picked 14 foot green. And then I picked a you know, 25 footer for the yellows, 50 foot are my reds, you know, blue is 150 feet, uh, white is uh, 75 footers. So I purposely, um, you know, have the one link there so I could pick different colors of cable by the length. But that, those only go up to 150 feet. So if you have to go over 150 feet, I, I posted another link there, which this is a, a 200 footer and it only comes in black, but I can get up to a 330 foot um, ethernet patch cables. So that's, you know, one, that's one of the things about the links down below is you can get different, uh, different patch cables there. So, um, so that's how we brought, um, you know, fiber backbone into Harmony Ridge RV Park and <coughs> hooked up the RV sites with, um, you know, copper Wi-Fi dedicated hotspots. Like, comment, you know, ask any questions, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications, and I will see you in the next video.